so welcome back as you know G uh, gujarat's lawn tennis tv we are having a uh, learning from legends uh, study circle online on zoom generally on saturday but due to some uh, technical reasons we could not meet on uh, saturday at 8 pm but today uh, we had organized and we are going to meet uh, regarding our left part of the previous webinar that is Nadal and you. So this is our part two, Nadal and you. Let us see uh, how the similarities between you and Nadal is there. Okay, let us see that. So first thing comes, that is uh, today, first thing comes, that is father's consolation. Sometimes it happens that father's consolation is a fire. And sometimes it happens that it extinguishes you. Okay, so uh, you might have faced some things, uh, similarities like after playing the match or during the match, you know, the reaction of your father, maybe your parents, something, something. So that is what uh, I had taken some part from his biography. <clears throat> it said here that uh, when Nadal was uh you know uh, in the month of august and that is before two years he won the championship that is Balearic island championship and after that he enjoyed summer vacation with his friends and fully uh enjoyed you know fully means uh, without any training sessions without any coaching periods and he enjoyed completely the vacation and after uh, completion of the vacation in the month of August, there was a tournament and he was taken by his father to the tournament spot, the venue of, uh, of the tournament. Okay, and he lost it. Uh, he said that, uh, I still remember the score 6363 against a guy I should have beaten. On the way back home in the car, Nadal was deathly silent. His father, who'd uh, never seen him so gloomy, tried to cheer him up. Nadal's father said, come on, it's not such a big deal. Don't feel bad. You can't always win. And Nadal said nothing. His father uh, couldn't shake him out of his dark mood. So he went on. So his father again continued that, look, you have had a fantastic summer with your friends. Be happy with that. You can't be, you can't have everything, you know. You can't be a slave to tennis. He thought he was presenting him with a convincing argument, but he burst out crying. Nadal cried uh, while he was returning which shocked his father still more because he never cried before. Not then. His father insisted, come on, you have had a terrific summer. Why was that not enough? Yes, dad, Nadal replied. But all the fun he had then can't make up for the pain he was feeling at the moment. He never wanted to feel this way again. So this might be happening with you. Okay, so this is my one of the try. And let us go ahead with that. That is, you know, the extinguisher. Now let us see the fire. Okay. In the last session, we had uh, uh, come across, you know, uh, uh, about the Davis Cup final, as well as the French Open of uh, Nadal and Patrick, the match he won. Now, this is uh, regarding how uh, his father made him, you know, uh, particularly fire for Wimbledon. Okay, let us see. Nadal says, I was strolling around with my father when we passed a luxury sports car store. I stopped, looked in the window, saw this beautiful vehicle and said to my father, you know what, dad, I think I might like to buy Myself, one of these. My father looked at me as if I was nuts. I understood his reaction. I had expected it. There is nothing written on the subject. 
no law against it but i knew as well as he that owning such a car might be interpreted by the rest of the family and by our neighbors in mankar and indeed by my father himself as a vulgarly ostentatious extravagance i felt a bit seepies but in my heart of hearts i still wanted that car if my father had said no no way i would have given up on that idea at once just remember if father had said no 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 so i i would have rather given the idea at once i wouldn't have gone ahead and bought the car without his blessings but now this is fire but he came up with what he thought was a devious compromise he said look if you win we must then this year you can buy yourself one of those how about that nadal said how about if i win the french open here in paris this week itself so this is you know the argument happened between nadal and his father then his father smile and said no no you win me maldon then you can buy he had replied as nadal knew perfectly well at the time with the mischievous conviction that wimbledon was not within his reach that year he never thought he would lose that bet a month later at the start of the final set of wimbledon center court it was yet one more incentive for him to bid fader and win the grand slam tournament all players most cherished and that is what you know the fire is so and the father's consolation sometimes it happens that he is extinguisher sometimes he is fire and it happens to you also isn't it let us go ahead struggle at wimbledon do you find any similarities at your level maybe under 16 and 18 maybe itf juniors maybe atp ranking twos do you find such kind of similarities look at this okay in 2006 roger federer defeated nadal 2007 roger federer defeated nadal 2008 nadal defeated federer one year it's a long period isn't it it is not a small time it's a long period so continuously and just uh, i i i wanted to recall you that in 2000 and uh 2003 okay that is andy rodic was defeated by nadal in davis cup final okay now here the nadal waited for two consecutive years that is in the final match and in the third in 2008 he won with a score of 6-4 6-4 first two sets in pocket and then 6-7 6-7 two sets in Roger's pocket now, and the fifth set that is by nine seven. Just imagine, you know the score, and that is why champions do have fear of winning, and that is what he mentions in his biography. I had always dreamed of playing here in Wimbledon. My uncle Tony was, uh, you know, especially. Uh, talking about wimbledon this is a great tournament the big tournament you know everybody is talking it and nadal himself while he was younger around 14 16 he used to tell his friends that yes this is a big tournament i would like to play this and i i wanted to win this you know so many times and what happens in 2006 defeated by fader 2007 defeated again by fader and in 2008 he won and he mentions he knew he could have done better in the previous two years that it was not his ability or the quality of his game that had failed him but his head okay that is fear of winning and that is how happens to 
every one of you also right okay uh course mother versus coach the scenario which is generally happening to every one of you okay people studies mother and coach okay tony was hard on him uh, and nadal's mother remembers that as a small child sometimes he would come home from training crime she uh, would try to get him to tell her what the matter was but he preferred to keep quiet once he confessed to her that tony had a habit of calling him as a mama's boy which pained her but i begged her not to say nothing to tony because that was only have made matters worse so there there is you know conversation between mother and son and the coach and son that is nadal okay now tony never let up once that means tony nadal is very hard in coaching tony live uh, tony never let up once he started playing competitive games when he was 7 it got tougher when very hot day he went to match without his bottle of water he had forgotten it back home he could have he means here tony tony could have gone and bought him one but he didn't so that he would learn to take responsibilities he said why didn't he rebel because nadal enjoyed tennis and enjoyed it all the more once he started winning and because he was an obedient and docile child so this is how the real, this is also happening to you also right sometimes your mama maybe your papa and maybe your coach is doing all these things and that is for your development that is required to make your uh, inner toughness increase your toughness right and time comes celebration you might have uh, come across after winning you know uh, trophies or maybe you know small uh, tournaments maybe at different levels so uh, the consequences comes as celebrations let us celebrate today you have won so there are uh, there are different opinions you know uh, somebody wishes to celebrate and enjoy somebody has a different feelings so that that is what i had taken from uh, rafa's biography the celebration comparison between coaches and family uh nadal's family is much more uh, you know in intent uh, kind of a festive family so uh, generally whenever there is something is there they used to celebrate but tony is uh, you know telling him repeatedly that we malorkans we are not much given to celebrations okay so that is what his uh, biography mentioned about the same and uh, despite his misgivings his father could raise no objections and nadal had a new trophy to place alongside so this is one of the uh, incident of uh, uh, the after winning wimbledon okay and that is what he had mentioned so uh, generally you know uh, tony the coach uh, wanted uh, to be uh, on the ground instead of celebrating and while parents or the relatives wanted to celebrate these things so and there is a difference between the two and it happens to you also right am i right or wrong so uh, this is how uh, there are lots of similarities between you and nadal while he was building and starting his career okay fine so i keep up to here if you have any question you may drop here